We've been conducting trials on soybeans for the last five years. There have been a number of principles we've attempted to demonstrate, but we didn't always get the results we expected. We explored the concept of cultivating the soil to warm it up. Soybeans are a warm season crop and need to be seeded into warm soil. Some producers blacken the soil prior to seeding soybeans to accomplish this. Soybeans seeded into soils below 8 degrees can become cold shocked. Here's a nice lab experiment which demonstrated this phenomena. In the first tray on the left, soybeans have been grown under ideal conditions of 21 degrees Celsius for 17 days. The middle tray has been cold shocked and is emerging quite poorly. In this cold shock treatment, soybeans were planted into 7 degree soil for 20 hours and then received 21 degrees Celsius for the remaining 17 days. The third tray on the right was planted into 21 degree soil for 8 hours, at which time the soil was cooled to 7 degrees for 4 days and then raised back up to 21 degrees Celsius for the remaining 13 days. This tray is emerging quite well and demonstrated how important it is for soils to be warm for the first 8 hours while the seed is imbibing water. Our first attempt to demonstrate the effect of cultivating soil was in 2013. I literally had just started with ECRF and this project was given to me. With more prep time I would have done it differently. To me, the results from this trial produced more questions than answers. We seeded a group of varieties into soil which was either undisturbed or rotivated. The cultivation equipment wasn't available at the time, so unfortunately rotivation was done instead. The rotivation was done on May 19th, and the varieties were seeded on May 24th. Soybeans seeded into warmer, rotivated soil were expected to mature faster, be taller, with a longer first internode, and higher yielding. A longer first internode is desirable because the lowest pods will be higher off the ground, making it easier to harvest them. The results of the demonstration were unexpected. While the soybeans did mature faster, they were shorter with a shorter first internode and they yielded worse. Here you can see the variety Vito maturing more rapidly in the rotivated soil compared to where the stubble was left standing. On average, varieties in the rotivated soil were 5 inches shorter. The yield for every variety was lower when seeded into rotivated soil compared to direct seeded into standing stubble. Clearly, we didn't demonstrate what we intended. Why did the rotivated plot perform poorly? Were the soybeans seeded deeper into the softer, rotivated soil? Possibly, but if that was true, it didn't affect emergence or stand establishment. Perhaps the rotivation dried out the soil and or somehow reduced nitrogen fixation. This is my best explanation. Reduced nitrogen fixation and less soil moisture would both result in earlier maturity and lower yield. We took another shot at testing the effects of cultivation on soybeans in this study conducted in 2016. This time the soil was properly cultivated in the fall prior to seeding the soybeans. The trial looked at two factors. The first factor was seeding soybeans into either fall cultivated soil or standing stubble. The second factor looked at seeding dates of May 5th, 16th, and 24th. Here is what the trial looked like on September 24th, 2015. In the foreground is the cultivated ground, and beside that is the standing stubble. At seeding depth, the cultivated soil was 12.1 degrees and the stubble was 11.5 degrees on the first seeding date of May 15th. Unfortunately, both of these soils are above the 8 degree minimum, despite the early seeding date. The difference in soil temperature may have been greater if there had been more residue on the stubble treatment, but for our trial, there was no cold shock effect for either treatment. Here is how those same treatments, which were seeded on May 5th, appeared on June 27th. For this rep in particular, the soybeans seeded into standing stubble look somewhat behind, but they certainly haven't been cold shocked. If we look at the main effects of seeding into cultivated versus standing stubble, you'll note there are no significant differences. Emergence is the same, maturity is not too different, 
and though not statistically significant, yield is a little better for the cultivated treatments. Here you are looking at the yield benefit from seeding into cultivated soil for each seeding date. Numerically, the benefit was much larger for the very early seeding date of May 5th. This would be expected, as the effect of warming the soil prior to planting should be more beneficial when soil temperatures are cool in early spring. There was some evidence to support cultivation could benefit soybean production when soybeans were seeded early. The benefit may have been even higher if the trash were heavier and there had been a frost. However, these benefits need to be weighed against soil conservation concerns. Also consider that soybeans shouldn't be seeded until mid to late May, and in our experiment, cultivated soil did not provide much of a benefit at those seeding dates. We have also tried to demonstrate the impact of seeding date on soybean production. Seeding too early runs the risk of cold shock and potential damage from late spring frosts. However, seeding too late means the crop won't mature in time, reducing yield and increasing the chance of green seed from fall frost. You can see from the last study we were just discussing that we weren't able to cold shock the soybeans by seeding early on May 5th. If anything, yields were numerically higher with the earliest seeding date, and of course the crop was ready to harvest considerably earlier. Here is how those maturity differences between seeding dates appeared on September 19th for the cultivated treatments. In the end, we did not demonstrate a risk to seeding early in 2016. In 2017, we took another shot at a soybean trial with a seeding date component. This trial also evaluated inoculant source. Again, we couldn't cold shock the soybeans even when seeding on May 5th because soil temperatures were once again well above the 8 degree minimum requirement. As a result, the yield for soybean when averaged across inoculation treatments did not differ between seeding dates. The early seeded treatment was more advantageous because it reached physiological maturity five days earlier. If I had seeded this particular trial in 2015, the results would have been very different because a killing frost of minus 2 to 4 degrees on May 30th occurred that year. Early seeded soybeans would have succumbed to the frost. I did seed soybeans in 2015, but the seeding date was May 21st, and the soybeans emerged two days after the killing frost. The soybeans dodged a bullet that year because they were seeded in mid to late May. My canola trials did not fare very well that year. Between the frost and the flea beetles, I ended up reseeding those trials. Other legumes, such as faba bean and peas, were also frosted, but grew back from basal nodes. Cereals were also frosted off, but of course their growing point is below ground, so they just continued to grow. On the other extreme, you can of course seed too late. In 2014, we seeded a number of varieties on May 22nd and again on June 3rd. Yield for all varieties was significantly reduced when seeding was delayed from May 22nd to June 3rd. Of course, delaying seeding also delayed maturity. Here are four varieties arranged from early maturing on the left to later maturing on the right. Not surprisingly, the later seeded soybeans are behind in maturity. Here are those same varieties later in the year after a killing frost. The early seeded soybeans were mature enough not to be affected by the frost. However, when late seeded, the only variety unaffected by frost was the extremely early maturing variety on the far left. Unfortunately, this variety also happens to be low yielding. The rest of the varieties which were seeded late have wilted leaves from the frost and ended up producing green seed. From this picture you can see the varieties Tilston and Anola were more greenish when they were seeded late. As a result, they were downgraded. Oh, what a difference a year can make. What easily matures one year may struggle the next. You are looking at the maturity difference for the variety Musuman on 2013 and 2014. Within each year the crop was seeded and the picture was taken virtually on the same calendar date. Well, we never did show that 
Early seeding could cold shock soybeans and reduce yields. The soil was too warm both years. However, it should be noted that yield was not lost in either year by waiting until mid to late May to seed. In fact, seeding in mid late May saved a trial in 2015 when we had the late spring frost. We did demonstrate that seeding in early June could be too late for soybeans to mature. In the end, the optimum seeding date is from mid to late May and the window is small. Another concept we tried to demonstrate was the importance of dual inoculation. The general recommendation in Manitoba is to dual inoculate soybeans if the land doesn't have a recent history of two well nodulated soybean crops. Dual inoculation means inoculant on the seed and granular banded to the side. In our study, soybean yields were increased by 56% when granular inoculant was side banded. In contrast, applying inoculant to the seed alone had no yield benefit. While we were expecting dual inoculation to be the best option, we weren't expecting the inoculant on seed only treatment to perform so poorly. The treated seed may have been mishandled before it was received. Here you see some representative roots from the inoculant treatments. Nodulation when inoculant was only applied to the seed is not much better than the no inoculant check. In contrast, there are many more root nodules where granular inoculant was sidebanded. These differences were also apparent above ground. The treatments receiving granular inoculant banded to the side are darker green, indicating less nitrogen deficiency. While we didn't demonstrate the importance of dual inoculating soybeans, mainly because inoculant on seed did not perform well at all. However, granular alone did well. Finally, we explored whether bushy soybeans perform better at wide row spacings. One might wonder why anyone might be interested in wide row spacings such as 20 inches. Obviously, producers experimenting with soybeans are going to use equipment they have on hand. So for our producers, this means solid seeding soybeans on about 10 inch row spacing. However, producers are going to ask if it's worth the investment of moving to a planter with wider row spacings. The advantage of wider row spacing might include lower seed costs and reduced levels of white mold. However, a disadvantage, particularly for our producers, might be prolonged maturity. Soybean statures can be grouped into erect, semi-bush, and bushy. Bushier varieties are believed to be more suitable to wide row spacings because they can achieve canopy closure faster than erect varieties. This trial looked at varieties representing the three statures and grew them at two target plant populations and two row spacings. The targeted plant populations were 175 and 200,000 plants per acre. Past research would indicate that lower plant populations should be recommended for wider row spacings. The third factor examined row spacings of 10 and 20 inches. The soybeans came up well and actual plant emergence was a little off targeted populations. So let's look at the yield data. These means are averaged over plant population because differences in plant population did not affect yield and there were no significant interactions. Tilston is an upright erect variety and yielded just well at either 10 or 20 inch row spacing. North Star Genetics also reports seeing similar results in their studies. Anola, which is a semi-bushy variety, performed significantly better at the 20 inch row spacing. Gladstone, which is a bushy variety, also performed better at the 20 inch row spacing, but differences were not significant. There was some evidence for the bushier soybeans to yield better at 20 inches versus 10 inch row spacing. However, they didn't necessarily out yield the erect variety. Soybeans can be produced well on 10 inches, and I don't see a strong reason to move to 20 inches. Of course, this is only one study, and a true planter was not used for the wider row spacing. In summary, the fall cultivation may have benefited early seeded soybeans by providing a warmer start to the year and reducing the risk of early season frost. However, that practice needs to be considered against soil conservation issues. We couldn't demonstrate that early seeding resulted in seed shock from cold and resulted in reduced yields. Soils were always warm in early May 
An early seeded soybean was never harmed by late frost, but it could happen. We were able to demonstrate issues with late seeding, so the ideal time seems to be mid to late May. Granular inoculant performed really well, seed applied inoculant did not, and we're wondering if the seed was mishandled. As a result, we weren't able to demonstrate the benefit of dual inoculation. Bushy soybeans can perform better at wide row spacings of 20 inches, but the yields are still comparable to a solid seeded erect variety, so I wouldn't rush out to change your seeder.